Welcome to part 21 of our Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we took a look at how we would actually get the underlying data for an episode when we're on the character info screen. In this video, we'll actually build out this cell and more or less finish up this character detail screen. So drop a like down below, say hello in the comments, and let's uh, push onwards. So what we essentially have in our cell here, what we configured our view model to give back to us is three pieces of information. The name of the episode, the air date, as well as the uh, kind of season and episode number. Now, what we want to do is we want to have three labels and just kind of show these on this cell. We also want that cell to be tappable to get some more information about a single episode. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. So let's get to it. So we have definitely already created labels before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna steal them from here. So let's find the cell where we've created labels and I'll literally copy and paste them and we'll tweak them. So we'll have one, two, and a total of three. So first we are going to have the, let's call this the season label. We'll call the next one the name label and the final one will be air date label like so number of lines i guess we can go ahead and do one for all of these so i'm just going to go ahead and delete that since we don't need it we are going to want to change the fonts so for the season this is going to be the most prominent label at the top followed by name and then followed by air date so this one i guess i'll leave as 20 and here we can go ahead and say semi bold the name i guess i'll leave 22 and make this regular for the weight and then finally for the air date, this is important but not as important, so I'll make it 18 and maybe we'll go ahead and make this light for the font weight. So cool, so now that we have this, let's talk about what the cell is gonna look like. The first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this kind of obnoxious blue color. Now we do want a little bit of color because I personally think it makes things look nicer. So I am going to add a border, let's do two and see what that looks like as well as a border color and this is going to be ui color dot system blue dot cg color and let's go ahead and add into our content view our sub views so we're going to have season name as well as what's the last one season name and air date down here in prepare for reuse we just want to reset all of these i like doing this up front so i don't forget for the views that i'm adding so here we'll nil these out as well as the last one that I keep forgetting, which is air date. Once we have our data here, what we can actually go ahead and do is just assign it. So we are going to say week self. And at this point, we are actually already on the main queue. If you recall, because this block is actually called on the main queue. And the reason I know that is because that's how we built it. So this is already on the queue that it was invoked on, which is main. And here we're actually bumping up to the main queue so we can directly configure our uh, views in here. So we'll say self .name label text is name. I will copy and paste this a total of three times. Here we will have the uh, season and then the air dates season. Well, actually there is no name. What we want is data.name data.episode is what it's called, and then data.airdate. And I actually am going to prefix some of this stuff, so let me go ahead and get rid of data here. For the name of the episode, I think that's fine, we can just leave the name. Here, what we're going to go ahead and do is say episode, colon, or maybe we don't need the colon, we'll just add a space. And for the air dates, I'll actually go ahead and say that this is uh, aired on add a space like that, and I think it'll look pretty nice. So let's go ahead and see why this is yelling at me. It looks like air date for some reason uh, is yelling at me because I don't have a plus, obvious mistake. Finally, we wanna actually add constraints and give this a build and run. So I'm gonna call this function we previously had written out, and we are going to activate some constraints. So we're gonna go ahead and say NS layout constraint, we want to activate here. And before I put all these constraints together, let's give this a build and run and see what our cell is looking like. Okay, cool. So we have this nice blue outline. It's kind of a rounded uh, card looking thing. We probably need a background color still. Um, and then we have all these labels smushed on top of each other. So let's actually give this a background color for the content view. I want this to be something a little more prominent. So I'm gonna use a quaternary 
system background, but it actually looks like that doesn't exist. So what I'll actually do here is use tertiary system background. Don't want to use the system fill there. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty nice actually. So let's go ahead and add our labels. So let's go ahead and do up here the season label dot top anchor constraint is going to equal, let's try that again, our content views top anchor. And I'm gonna copy and paste this a total of three times and just do the left anchor, the right anchor, left anchor, right anchor. And then now we wanna give this a fixed height. So let me actually go ahead and do a height anchor here and we are going to say this is going to be our content views heights uh, with a multiplier and we are going to say 0 0.3 perhaps and it looks like multiplier looks like we've got a typo there that's yelling at me oh this is a constant that's why let's try that again so we want a constraint with this one here content view heights and we're going to say 0 0.3 and let me actually go ahead and just copy and paste this for our other labels. And I like to split it up like this just so you can visually separate. This one here will be the name label and just don't forget to uppercase that L. And this one here will be the air date label. And the only thing that's gonna vary for the name and air date is the top. So this is going to be from the bottom of the season label, bottom anchor. And this one is going to be from the name labels, name labels, bottom anchor. So let's go ahead and give this a build and run. Let's see if things are overlapping. We'll probably need to adjust and we'll adjust as needed. So cool, it actually isn't too bad. So let's add some left and right um, margin because we certainly do want that. And I actually think it looks pretty nice. Maybe we don't really need to adjust it too much. So for the left anchor and right anchor, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a find and replace. So we have a total of six of these for left and right and combined. We're gonna say left anchor, and I'm gonna say replace this with a comma constant, and maybe we'll replace it with 10. So if we do all, hopefully that compiles and isn't an issue. Um, you can intelligently use this find and replace for a bunch of things, and it saves a whole lot of time. So pro tip from uh, the peanut gallery over here. So we'll go ahead and do right anchor constant, and we want this constant to be negative 10. And this is because we're moving from right to left. And on iOS, you know, X zero being is on the left. So we'll scroll down here, and I actually think it looks pretty nice. It would be nice if we had like a line under uh, this like first label here, but we don't, and I think that's okay. So as we scroll, You'll see that it does actually load the data opportunistically just in time. Where if you know if we scroll fast enough, um, you don't actually see like any lag. And if we scroll back, we shouldn't be fetching the data again. We should just read from the uh, actual data that we have previously fetched. So everything looks like it's working, and we're in pretty good shape. Before we wrap it up, let's actually handle clicking on or tapping on one of these cells because we're not handling that at the moment. To do that, we're gonna to jump to our controller, and what we specifically want to do is we wanna implement the did select function in our collection view, and we wanna basically validate what thing was selected on. So we're gonna actually copy this entire switch that we previously wrote, and the only thing we wanna allow selection for is the episode, so I am just going to delete all of this, put a comma there, we don't care about this either, so if the photo and or information is selected, it will just break. But if an episode is selected, what I particularly care to do is get a episode, its view model, and then we want to actually go and push on a uh, screen, a controller that will help render an episode. So how do we go about doing that? Well, this episode already, uh, or this view model already, I should say, will give us the particular uh, information that we need, right? So we have all this is fetch stuff on here. We're holding the URL. But if you think about it, do we really want to pass in that view model? Eh, probably not. So instead, what we can do is we can actually take the episodes, the URLs for those episodes directly off of the view model that we passed in here, 
right? Because what we actually end up getting in this function is an index path. So we already know at which index path row we want to get the information, so we can just get the URL directly. So we'll say episode URL will be self.viewmodel, singular. On that we want episodes. So let's see, there should be episodes on here somewhere. So let's see what this view model is. I might be mistaken. So this view model is a character detail view view model. Alrighty. So this has a character on it. And what I'm going to expose on here is perhaps it's episodes. So I'll actually go ahead and say episodes. And I'll actually go ahead and expose this as character, return character dot episode. And this thing is an array of strings. And now what we can do down here is actually get those episodes. So I'm gonna say, give me the episodes. And from the episodes, we want the selection, which is uh, going to be, I guess we can call this episodes, plural. We want to get the thing at index path dot row. So the reason we actually went about doing all that and going through that trouble is we can pass this model directly into another controller. And to wrap up, we're going to create that controller. So similar to how we have a RM character detail view controller here, we are going to have a, you guessed it, a RM episode detail view controller. Let me make sure I spelled that correctly. Looks like I did. And in here, what we'll go ahead and do is we are going to say title is episode and we are going to update the initializer to take in a URL. Self.URL will be URL. We haven't created that property yet. We'll call the super initializer as well as bring in the uh, NS coder uh, required initializer. Let's go ahead and toss in the URL property here. Shouldn't have any build errors, hopefully. Looks like I actually do because this here should be a URL. I will actually make it optional. We'll finalize this class and let's come back here and we're just going to push this controller once the user taps on a episode. So we're gonna say VC is our episode detail controller. We're gonna create this with the selected, with the selection here. And it looks like the selection is of type string, which is perfect. And then we can say navigation controller dot push view controller VC animated true. And it's actually giving me a warning here that we're not using this uh, associated type, so we don't need it. So cool, we actually went through that kind of fast, so I'll recap, let's make sure it works. We can tap on an episode and we get this other screen. It kind of lagged for a quick second there, and the reason it did that is because uh, we actually have not set a background color here. We'll say system green. Even though it does look like it's the correct color, it was a clear empty nil color. So now you'll see this green screen gets uh, pushed on pretty, pretty fluidly. So let's just recap a little bit. We use the delegate function of did select item here. We get the position of the selected view model. We get the section first rather. And we wanna verify that we're in the episode section. Then from the position in that section specifically, we get the episode by exposing the episodes collection on the view model for the character detail screen in its entirety. And then we created this new controller and just passed in the URL. Now, one thing you might be thinking is, well, won't we need to redundantly fetch the actual contents of that episode? And that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier of we, with the current setup, we will, but we don't wanna actually have to do that, right? At the moment, we have the model for the particular episode held inside of here. Well, this is a view, not inside of here, held inside of here, the info view model, right? We actually hang on to it in here episode, but it's kind of not good practice to then expose this out of the view model. So we wanna weigh it at a caching layer such that if we request the information again for an episode, we'll have it stored somewhere to return immediately and not actually make a network call. So that's what we're gonna dig into in the next video. Before I end this one here, we'll add some doc strings. So this will be a VC to show details about single episode, like so, beautiful. 
here we have some life cycle functions. So we're gonna say life cycle. And most importantly, since I haven't done it at all for the past like 10 videos, we are going to stage and commit everything. So we are going to add everything. I'm gonna commit and say, build out character detail screen like so and then do a git push and by the way to clear out the output you can do command k which is a nice way to just see everything that's going on you can also do a git log and see the history of all of your commits so yep that is basically all i've got for this video appreciate you watching drop a like before clicking away it helps out so so much can't stress it enough Tweet the series out, share it on Instagram, LinkedIn. Every single person that you know shares helps a lot. I'll see you in the next part.